Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 32 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'm going to be looking at stage two of making the moving bed, in which I'll be solving a mortar and pipework problem, fixing, kinda, the shed floor, and connecting the moving bed into the filtration system. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. If you do, please consider liking and subscribing. The moving bed isn't my only project this year, so there's lots I'm planning to show you. In addition to that, the pond and its inhabitants are starting to liven up after winter, and I'll be doing my best to show you how they develop, behave and grow during the rest of the year. Right, let's get started. Before I start, I need to explain that quite a lot of the process was not recorded due to my GoPro being temperamental. However, I think there's enough to give a good enough account of what I've done and how well it's gone. Right, I'll start where we left this after stage one of making the moving bed. I'd installed the bulkheads, made and positioned the grid and completed a leak test. There were a couple of leaks, but only on the temporary pipework I'd attached rather than the bulkheads or more permanent fittings. So, the first preparation job for stage two was to glue some permanent pipework to the drainage bulkhead and attach the temporary pipework properly to the inlet and then retest. Both passed, so I was good to go. The last preparation job for stage two was to check on a potential problem. My current setup has one and a half inch pipework from the pump into the filter and then one and a half inch pipework from the filter back to the pond. The problem with this is that I have to reduce the flow from the pump to prevent the filter from overflowing. My plan therefore was, as I was overhauling the filtration anyway, I should resolve this and change the outlet from the filter to two inch pipework. However, there was a potential issue where the outlet connected underground to the four inch pipe that was built into the wall of the walled area. Therefore, to check this out, I dug away some earth in the walled area to both free the old pipework and gain access to the rubber reducer that connected the one and a half inch pipe to the four inch. However, with the earth removed, I found that the reducer itself was embedded in the mortar, so things weren't going to be as easy as I'd hoped. But still, it shouldn't be too difficult, and I should be able to chip away at the mortar to release the rubber reducer without the whole wall collapsing, wouldn't I? So, on to stage two proper. The first job was to disconnect the multibay from the pipework in the shed and move it outside. I then used my submersible pump, which pays for itself almost every day, to pump water through the filter to keep things going while I work. I then narrowed the drainage pipework to reduce the multibay's footprint and make room for the moving bed in the shed. With some two inch pipework connected to the multibay instead of the original one and a half inch, there was no overflowing something that had happened when I used a submersible pump on the filter during my recent electrical problems. So this was a good sign that I'd be able to have a greater flow rate through the filter with the larger pipework. The next job was to solve the pipework and mortar problem. As always, I didn't really have the right tools, so I used a flat edge screwdriver and a hammer and carefully chipped away at the mortar. It actually went okay and I could release the reducer and create enough room to accurately attach the new one. And the wall didn't collapse, so happily, that was the first problem overcome. The next job was to address the shed floor. Water damage from leaks and clumsiness hadn't done the floor any good. Now, 
I probably should have completely replaced it, but that would have meant dismantling most of the shed, and, well, I kind of chickened out of doing that. Anyway, my plan for the time being was to add some waterproof membrane on top of the old floor, then a new floor made of OSB, and then cover that with vinyl flooring. At the very least, this would prevent further damage, as the vinyl floor would mean that any leaks and spills could be mopped up without causing any harm. With that done, although unfortunately not properly recorded due to the GoPro turning itself off, I could then turn my attention to positioning the filters in the shed and connecting the pipework. This was tricky, very tricky. Firstly, I had to get the height of the outlet on the moving bed and the height of the outlet on the multi-bay to match as closely as possible. I also had to ensure that the moving bed was as far to the left as possible to be able to fit the multi-bay back in. After getting the height pretty close, I then connected the outlet pipework, although only loosely fixed to the moving bed at first, to allow some flexibility when moving in the multi-bay. Although completing that still proved to be an absolute nightmare of a Tetris puzzle, but I did get it in and then was just about able, in the very limited space, to connect the pipework in place linking the two filters and the pipework to the outlet. I then plumbed in the inlet pipework, turned the pump on and started filling the system. I'll talk about that towel later. To begin with, I kept the flow low as I wanted to test for leaks and balance before looking at increasing the flow rate. Initial checks, pink towel aside, didn't show any leaks. The bubbles here show what I'd hoped the flow into the moving bed would do, spread reasonably equally in mixing, rather than a narrow flow straight back to the outlet. Still no leaks, you know, except for that towel. Finally, it reaches the top of both the multi-bay and the moving bed and begins flowing through the outlet and back to the pond. A quick check here of the outlet. I've not buried it yet until I'm sure there's no leaks, although none so far. By the way, there's a joint here to allow the flexible pressure pipe to make an S shape. I have found two leaks, both very small. One near the valve where the water enters from the pond, where the pink towel is. This was a problem that I'd had previously and thought was fixed. The other is at the last fixing where the rigid pipe joins the flexible pipe. It's a small drip every almost minute or so and was quite hard to spot. I've ordered some new fittings to correct both of them, which I'll cover in next week's episode. For the time being, the towels are doing the job. As well as fixing them, over the next week I'll be adding the media, setting up some temporary aeration and hopefully tinkering with the flow rate. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. I'd be really grateful if you could give it a like and consider subscribing if you've enjoyed it. In next week's episode, I'll show stage three of making the moving bed, in which I'll be adding media, installing some temporary aeration and fixing the small leaks. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.